Center of Life Church, making life worth living. There's a word he has for us, and as we build up on that word, it's for us, it's not for the minister. It's for us to grow. It's because of what God has in store for us, ahead of us. But we need to grow into where he's taking us. We've outgrown where we are, spiritually. Just like as a church, we know we've outgrown this physical space, and we're looking to expand so as individuals as well, we have outgrown where we are spiritually. God wants us to move out. God wants us to spread out. God wants to do more for us and in us and through us. Amen. Where I stopped, I think the last scripture I read in, um, on Wednesday, I'll start from there, which is 1 Peter 2, 9. And <clears throat> that scripture just jumped out, you know, from the TPT translation i'll be reading a lot from the passion translation except if i for any reason go into old testament which you know you don't have that then i can use the amplified it says but you are chosen you are god's chosen treasure priests who are kings a spiritual nation set apart as god's devoted ones i want you to just note if you have your bible as an you actually carrying your Bible, even if it's your iPad or whatever, you can actually underline. iPad allows you to do that. You can bold it. You can bold in the letters. You can make it into italics. You can underline it. So there's a lot you can do as well. Priests who are kings. So just note that. Underline it. Bold in it. You know, a spiritual nation set apart as God's devoted ones. He called you out of darkness to experience his marvelous light. And now he claims you as his own, as his very own. He did this so that you would broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world. You know, reading this again, it was like God just reminded me of earthly fathers. You're proud of your children. You want to show them off. You know, it just, the Holy Spirit just brought me back to Isaiah 62, 3, where it says that, where his crown of glory, a royal diadem in the hands of our God. He just wants to keep showing his, his children off for everything God is doing in us, for us, through us. It's just to show forth his glorious wonders throughout the world. Remember that the great commission, the beginning and the end of it is for us to go out and make disciples of men. That's the great commission. So God is showing forth his own. Everybody wants to be like the person that is winning. Everybody wants to be like the person that is at the top, the good ones. So it's like, why not? Why shouldn't that be my own children? So everything God started from the beginning, that was his end result. I know that I want to draw men to myself. But it's not nobody's going to follow somebody that is, you know, like beaten down, doesn't think highly of himself. Every day, you know, it's like one story or the other. No. So my children should be the best of the best. My children should be the ones that will stand out anywhere. My children should be the ones that their voices will be heard everywhere. Because they know me and I know that they're going to say what I say, like Jesus said. I don't say what is mine. I say what I hear the father say. They're going to behave like me. So that is God's mission. That is his purpose. And that is everything he's doing for us in us through us is to achieve that for us to go out and make disciples of other men. So that's the first thing we need to understand. So everything, we're coming to church, we're learning to pray, we're learning the word, everything we have skills talents abilities to use in the marketplace it is to bring make disciples of men draw men to him everything we're doing is about bringing more people into the kingdom of god amen and where it says that priests who are kings 
You know, the Holy Spirit now broke it down. Like I tried a little bit on Wednesday. A king reigns and rules with authority. He has a domain. He reigns and rules with authority and power. That's why he said it makes you priests who are kings. Your priesthood empowers you to reign as kings in life. So that's the first thing God wants us to know. And I would still go back and break a little bit as, it, as, as he just put it inside of me. It says a king, when you wake up, a king that wakes up in the morning, regardless of what's happening in his domain, in his kingdom, he, doesn't, he, does, he, he can deal with his emotions in his room. But when he comes out, he comes out with authority. He comes out with power and he begins to decree. He begins to make decrees, pass laws, legislate. And the people in his kingdom have no choice but to begin to follow whatever he tells them to do. If we get that, we understand that when we're empowered as priests, we pray ourselves up as priests. We sit in his presence and receive power. We receive direction. We receive clarity. Then we come out as kings, wherever he has assigned us to, and begin to legislate, begin to decree, begin to take charge. And every other thing begins to align, fall in place. Whatever is not right begins to fall in place for us. That's why it says you are God's chosen treasure, priests who are kings. God wants us to see ourselves as he sees us. We're not um, creatures of our environment. We're children of the most high God. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. So regardless of what is happening around us, we have to remember whose we are and where we've come from. Amen. I'm going to read something, and that's just how God, the Holy Spirit just put it in my heart. I, I, I know it, it, it was, it, it's going to, it's a bit long. It says, God's love for man is so deep and intense, and is intentional about every aspect of our life. He created us in his likeness with a desire to duplicate himself on earth. On earth. His spiritual personality, he poured himself into us, which makes us stand out from other living creatures, according to Genesis 1.26, to have dominion and reign in life. He empowered us through the Holy Spirit and provided all that we need through the resurrection of Jesus, the new covenant blessings. That's just how we put it. Summary of everything that why he's done everything for us. Like I said, he wants us to come and reign as kings. And these are things that are not new to us. We probably have heard it a lot of teaching, especially for those of us that have been under Pastor Bayo's teaching. This is not the first time he's taught us in depth about the new covenant blessing, about the new covenant, about the resurrection of Jesus. We've heard it. If you've not, and um, you are in this house or Maybe you're just watching. You can go download the app, colc.ca. Go to our website and download the app. Go to the past teachings because you probably have to build up on some of the teachings for you to get here. But just listen and then you go back. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing is word. It's a continuous thing. It's a continuous thing. Faith is developed through consistently spending time in God's presence. And that's why I said, you know, the Holy Spirit was just taking me back to the teaching of faith. For us, some of us has forgotten. Go back to uh, March teachings, the Wednesday and the Sunday teachings. It comes by spending time in God's presence, listening to the word of God, studying and meditating and prayer. By the time, by God's grace, this, I finish, the Holy Spirit teaches us, we would never ever see prayer, see studying the word, meditating on the word as a chore. We will look forward to it. We will not get enough of it in Jesus' name. And a lot of times, you know, when we listen, you know, the Holy Spirit was saying there's a, there's a connection between the ears and your heart. So if you listen and you don't hear, the word is like what Jesus said, that it falls by the wayside. The seed is deposited, but it falls by the wayside. And that's why we look at a lot of believers and we're like, why are things not working in my life? It's not that God is not done. God has already done and settled everything and everything and everything as he has ordained. 
but we need to check ourselves. Do I come to church because they said I should come to church? Do I come to church so that pastor doesn't say, where have you been all this while? Do I come to church because my head of department has been on my neck and where have you been? Okay, let me just come today and let it just be. Do I sit down to watch service because just in case somebody asks me, well, do you remember what happened? What was this shared last service? I would have something to say. We're sure changing ourselves. We're sure changing ourselves. Like I said, God wants us to grow, to grow, to grow. Growth will only come as we hear the word, as we spend time in his presence, as we study the word, as we grow ourselves in his presence. That's where growth wants, um, comes from. Our promotion, whether it's in the marketplace, our promotion is dependent on how much time we spend in God's presence. If we don't realize it, because it's as we grow spiritually that God entrusts a lot of things in the physical to us. Because where he wants to take us is greater, is bigger. Remember, we're priests who are kings. So it's like he can't just put you on the throne, in the palace, when you're not ready, when you're not prepared. Because he wants to show us off. And he doesn't want any one of us not to show forth his glory as he has planned it. So we might be the ones delaying what he has planned for us. And a lot of it comes from spending time in his presence. Amen. And I'll just go a little bit, you know, just kind of build up to show us how God planned, planned. Like I said, he created us in his own image after his likeness. He thought about us. He didn't just create man. So this is for somebody. You didn't just come to this world like a nobody. It doesn't matter how you came. Uh, whether out of wedlock, not out of wedlock, in wedlock, whatever men has labeled is a lie. God ordained, planned you. And planned everything that concerns you when you came into this world. Who and how you came into this world. We, we had no choice. Nobody had the choice of who my father and my mother will be. I didn't know. For those of us that come from very, very good homes, balanced homes, beautiful, wonderful. For some that come through from dysfunctional homes, you are still chosen by God. He has his reading for choosing your parents to be your parents. You had no choice. You didn't know. It was just his plan. Your background, it doesn't change what God has already planned and ordained for you. It's now up to you. It's up to you to walk into what he has already planned and ordained from the beginning. And that's the good thing of you now knowing Christ. That's the difference. Your parents have done what they, what they were given, their own assignment. They've already finished it. Thank God if your parents are still there and they're in your life and you know honor them, respect them, do everything as God has called and um, told us to do. But honestly, everything is in your own hands now. And as you walk with God, it will begin to unfold. It will begin to unfold. And that applies to our children as well. As parents, we continue to pray for them. We continue to lead, guide them. But the important thing is they come to know Christ themselves. That they will fully enter into who and what he has called them to be. Amen. But what he said, just going back a bit, you know, just building up on the new covenant blessings. You know, God was looking for somebody and he found somebody in faith and he found Abraham, the father of faith. And he told Abraham in Genesis 12, 23, for about 10 minutes, I will be going through scriptures just to build up on, you know, the new covenant blessings. How did we get there? What was God's plan? I always am the kind of person that always likes to, why, 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 why? When I see the why, when I'm clear on the why, it helps me run with where I'm going to. And I don't get distracted. I don't lose focus because there's, a, there's somewhere I'm going because I know why. I know where it's coming from. And I think if we understand it, it will help us as well. You know, it says, um, Genesis 12, 22 to 3 amplified he told abraham and i will make you a great nation and i will bless you abundantly and make your name great exalted distinguished and you shall be a blessing a source of great good to others and i will bless do good for benefit those who bless you and i will curse that is subject to my wrath and judgment the one who curses despises dishonors and has contempt for you and in you, all the families, nations of the earth will be blessed. It's that last sentence. In you, all the families, that includes every one of us, nations of the earth will be blessed. It 
gave that, he made, that was his first covenant. That was where the old covenant started. But God is, he says, I'm not man, you know, that I will lie. Whatever I say, I'm bound by my word to bring my word to pass. So we'll think years later, like man, man forgets, but God never forgets. He has spoken, he has decreed, he has declared it, he has established it. It will surely come to pass. And that, that uh, as well means the same thing with anything that God has given us. The promise never goes away from God. Mm -mm. God never gives a word and he forgets it. No, that is not God. Once he's spoken it, he's bound by his word to bring his word to pass. Amen? In verse, in, sorry, Genesis 17 verse 7 as well amplified. It says, I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants. After you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you. And to your descendants after you. An everlasting covenant. God never goes back on his word. And we see this fulfilled in Genesis. We're now going into the New Testament. New covenant he made. That is where you and I now come in. For us to know and see everything God has planned. Everything God has spoken concerning us. We begin to see it come to manifestation. In Genesis 3, 8 to 9. It says, and the scripture, that's um, the Passion Translation now, says it's just so simple and I think it's easy for, for understanding. Genesis 3, 8 to 9. And the scripture prophesies that on the basis of faith, God will declare Gentiles to be righteous. God announced the good news ahead of time to Abraham. Through your example of faith, all the nations will be blessed. See God years later, going back to what he promised Abraham. That will come to pass. That will come to pass. All nations, through him, all nations will be blessed. I'm, I'm sorry, I said Genesis. It's Galatians 3, 8 to 9. Galatians 3, 8 to 9. Pardon me. Galatians 3, 8 to 9. And so the blessing of Abraham's faith is now a blessing too. So God confirmed that. God confirmed that, that the blessing of Abraham's faith is now a blessing. That's in Galatians 3, 8 to 9. So we're going to go to Galatians 3, 13 to 14, and then 16 to 17. 13 to 14 and 16 to 17 says, yet Christ paid the full price to set us free from the curse of the law. He absorbed the curse completely as it, as it became a curse in your place. For it is written, everyone who is hung upon a tree is cursed. Jesus dissolved the curse from our lives. So that in him, all the blessings of Abraham can be poured out upon Gentiles, upon us. Jesus took it all. He dissolved all the cause so that we now begin to walk in the fullness of the blessing God had promised through Abraham. And now through faith, we receive the promised Holy Spirit who lives in us. Remember the royal proclamation God spoke over Abraham and to Abraham's child. That's Galatians. Okay. Not children. Who is this child? It is the son of promise. Jesus, the anointed Messiah. Let's go to 17. This means that the covenant between God and Abraham was fulfilled in Messiah and cannot be altered. I'll just stop there. So God has spoken that covenant, has spoken that word, and he made that covenant between himself and Abraham. And it was fulfilled in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he says it cannot be altered. Because now we have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. is in us. So that covenant, now we walk in the fullness of the covenant. That is the new covenant blessing. And everything he has done. When he laid his life on the cross of Calvary, one of my... Uh, Favorite scripture is John 19, 30, when Jesus said, it is finished. That word always just resonates, no matter what comes to mind, no matter what I'm facing. I just remember that scripture, it is finished. I've done it all for you. You rise up and work in the fullness of all that is now yours in me. It doesn't matter. The enemy would always try. That is his um, ministry. 
That is his ministry in life. He will do everything. But as long as we know who we are in Christ, we know whose we are, then we'll be able to say, no, I stand on my grounds. You know, on um, Friday, our mama in the house, our Pastor Shibola, through the covenant of healing ministry, she was saying, when you know, you know the word. Says, wait, um, Psalm 91, who says, you are in this habitation, and there, and there, that was all I heard. After everything, yeah, she said so many things, but that's, that was my word. And there. So when you are in his habitation, you are there. Hmm. Go and listen to that on Facebook. Covenant of Healing Ministries or Instagram. I can't go back into that, okay? Galatians um, 3, 26 to 27 and 29. says, you have become through children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. See where faith comes in? See where faith, that's why none of the word that was spoken. Go back to Friday, February um, teachings. Faith in Jesus Christ. Faith immersed you into Christ. And now you are covered and clothed with his life. And if you belong to Christ, then you are now Abraham's child. And a true heir of his blessings. Because of the promise God made to Abraham. So we're not just, you know, just um, Abraham's children. We're now heir of the blessings. Joint heir with Christ Jesus. Joint heir with Christ Jesus. So everything Jesus has, everything Jesus is, has access to, we have the same access. Jesus was seated by the Father at the right hand of the Father. We have that access. We have the right to sit by the Father as well. It says, come boldly. Come boldly to my throne of grace to obtain mercy and receive grace at the time of need. Boldly, confidently, not because of what I did yesterday, what happened. No condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Come boldly, boldly. You have the same access. You have the same same access that which Jesus has you have it I have it we have the same access to Christ to the Lord to God just as Jesus had we're joint heirs amen Romans 8 15 to 17 I said I'll read some scriptures just to build us up so that we see in the scriptures who we are and what all the steps God took for us to be established in the new covenant blessings. It says, and you did not receive the spirit of religious duty. Mm. None of us received the spirit of religious duty. In New King James, you say the spirit of the law. They were not under the law. But TPT just kind of breaks it down and says it in Monday day English. None of us, you did not receive the spirit of religious duty. I come to church, I'm a worker in church. Great, God loves that. But where are you with me? Where are you with me? That's what is the first, foremost in God and with God. He says, and you did not receive the spirit of religious duty, leading you back into the fear of never being good enough. That's what the enemy uses to hold a lot of believers down. I didn't pray enough. I have not studied the word. So maybe God has a king. When I go to class, do you remember, like you're in class now, you have assignment. <laughs> he never applies there, but we know. For those of us in a different generation, the teacher gives you homework and you didn't finish it. Ha. You didn't finish. Stand there. You finish, stand there. Those of you that didn't finish, you're already crying because you know. <laughs> you know, but we give God all the glory for the New Testament, for the New Covenant. Jesus already settled us. There's no king. There's nothing. We don't have to go back into that fear of never being good enough. Hallelujah. It says, but you have received the spirit of full acceptance as his child unfolding you into the family of God. Full acceptance. Like I said, your background does not matter. How you grew up does not matter. Who gave back to you does not matter. Now, as children of God, we're all levelers. Do you understand? We're all the same. We're all the same. We are all one. You grew up in the palace. It doesn't matter. I grew up outside the palace. In Christ Jesus, we are all the same. But you would have to know. Because the enemy will keep making you go back to that fear of never being good enough. Going back to the past. No. You have to say, I have the, the spirit of full acceptance. Enfolding me into the family of God. 
I will never, you will never feel offended, for he rises up within us. As spirits join him in saying the tender, the words of tender affection, beloved father. You have a right to call him Abba Father. You have a right to call him beloved father. You have to have a right to approach the throne of the king. Because, you know, it's like, okay, the sons of the kings are the, the king are the only ones that can come into the presence of the king. Now, because of Jesus Christ, because of what he has done, you and I, we have the right to approach him boldly as a father. Amen. That is what the blood of Jesus has done. That is what Jesus did for us on the cross. He laid down his life. So can you think of where love comes in? God loves you so much, loves me so much. And he ordained it that there's some people, it doesn't matter where they come from. It doesn't matter their background. It doesn't matter how they grew up. It doesn't matter how they got into this country. You didn't come in through the border. You came in from under the bridge, from under water. You are in this country. It doesn't matter. You're all one in him. You're all one in him. He sees us as one through the blood. And he wants us to see ourselves as he sees us. Amen. Hallelujah. When I was just, you know, <clears throat> reading this, they, they, I'm not just ministry. God was talking to me too. You know, I was just so excited. It was like something was just jumping out. You know, it's like you see yourself dif dif different. Not that you saw yourself different, but you now see yourself differently as well. Amen. 17. And since we're his true children, we qualify to share all his treasures. We qualify to share all his treasures. You know, it's like uh, it's only the children that can partake of the inheritance. Uh -huh. Now we're children. You know, the, I won't say the Prince Philip just died now, you know. It's like, there'll be some inheritance that he has, not just with the king, his own. He said, we know that it's only his children and maybe his grandchildren that will partake of the inheritance. But as children of the Most High God, <laughs> everything that belongs to him, we are qualified to share in it. The inheritance, just think about it. And, you know, it's like, like you said, like kings will reign, domain. King can, yeah, hmm, but, okay, let, let, the Holy Spirit is just trying to give me that understanding that the Queen of England now, we know that Canada pays royalty, Australia pays royalty, they're not here, we are the ones doing everything, but out of everything that we're doing, uh -huh, they get their own, so that's exactly the way it is, it's not about the work you have done. It's not about the work you will do. It's about what Jesus has done for us. So that is the understanding that you can't work hard enough. There's no work you can do hard enough to enjoy the inheritance he has for you and me. It's good to work hard. Don't go and sleep. But it's just trying to tell you that it's not your hard work. Mm -mm. If we read the scripture that God gave us, was it 2019? That it says the blessing, the year of the blessing, the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow. Other scripture will say it's not your hard work. Your hard work cannot even bring that blessing. So that's what he's explaining. That it's not anything. He says we all qualify to share his treasures for indeed we're heirs of God ourselves and since we're joined to Christ. You know, we also inherit all that he is and all that he has, and we will experience being co-glorified with him, provided we accept his sufferings as our own. His sufferings has come, there's, you know, we're in this world, like I said, not of this world. So some things happen. Things happen. But because we know whose we are, we know who we are, we know the person that is on the inside of us, we know who is backing us up, we know we will come out victorious. Because it says... The, um, the Preston already, you know, through us, um, took us through that um, song ministrations where we have the victory. We already have the victory. So everywhere we're coming, we're coming from a place of victory. We're coming from a place of triumph. So it doesn't matter. We see the end from the beginning. You know, when you watch a movie and you already know the end, you're not moved by all that is happening in between when it seems like ah, it's almost there. It's almost there. But you just smile and you know, I see the end. So that's the way we see the end. But we have to rise up to that knowing. Amen. And you know, God has taken his time to intentionally 
You know, like he said in Psalm, I fearfully and wonderfully and uniquely created you for my purpose. To create us to reign victoriously in life. That is what he has done. Unfortunately, as believers, a lot of us are not fully there yet. And when God gives a word, like he gave us this word through our senior pastor in this house, that this month is a month of new covenant blessings. It's not new that God has done that. God has already done that. It's bring us back to that knowing. To let us know. We talked about faith, about love. We already know faith, love in the Bible. We can quote it. But like he said, you know, it's like there's a difference between the ears and the heart. The ears and the heart. Do you hear it and receive it? Do you hear it and receive it? Does it go into your heart? Do you receive it in your spirit? Do you know it? Because, like I said, there's, 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 there's someone, the enemy, his ministry, John 10.10, 10, is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life. And have it more abundantly. In TPH it says a thief has only one thing in mind. Only one thing. He wants to steal. To slaughter and to destroy. But Jesus is saying. But I have come to give you everything in abundance. More than you expect. Life in its fullness until you overflow. So that is God's plan. That is God's purpose. That is God's mission for us. From the beginning when he created man. He never created man to suffer on earth. He never created. If we read that Bible, we'll know that a lot of things happen because of man. We come here on earth and different things happen through Adam. But God, even while Adam misbehaved, immediately had his plan B, Jesus. And he made sure... All the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, where there are to be sacrifices and everything, says, no, I don't even want my children, like I said, I don't want them working out. I don't want them going through all that. Once and for all, I settled this thing. And he came down to earth. He came down to earth as his son, Jesus. But he had to manifest as man. For us to understand and show us some things that in life, yes, some things will be normal. Some things we will go through. We see it in Jesus. When Jesus, when after he had already said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. What happened? Jesus went to spend some time in his presence. Jesus teaches us everything. Because we know we're believers. Because then we'll sit down and relax. No. Even while after 40 days, what happened? Satan appeared to him. It is his ministry. He goes around to and fro. To and fro. So and fro. That is his ministry. Looking for who to devour. It's not any one of us. But we don't sit back and do nothing. We saw Jesus himself. He rose up. He went to pray. 40 days and 40 nights. God help us. How many people can do that now? Even 40 days of breaking after. You know. But what is important is. He went to spend time in God's presence. He went to receive power in God's presence. He went to receive clarity of direction. What's next? Where I am now. Now God has said, I've empowered you to go forth into this ministry. He knows that he cannot go forth in the same power that he had at that time. He has to be empowered for the new. You can't put new wine in old wine skin. So that's the same thing too. A lot of us have been complaining about COVID, whatever is happening. Hmm. Sometimes we need to sit back and just look at times and seasons. Go to God. In all of this, it's not pleasant. It's not convenient. Another lockdown. Stop complaining. You go to God. Depending on where you have your time, you have now you don't have to do all the driving. Okay, I used to wake up at 5 a.m. to drive one hour, two hours. That five to six, take time, spend it in God's presence. It's for the needs for you. It's, there's nothing God wants to, what power the God wants. All power belongs to him. Do you understand? It's for us as children to empower us for the new, for the next level. We all want promotion. We all want the higher position. We all want, we want more in life. But the more comes with responsibility. 
If we look at every one of the patriarchs of old, every one that went through the old covenants to the fulfillment of the new covenant, please tell me who sat down and didn't go through any trouble or didn't face any opposition before they actually got their breakthrough. Whether it's Abraham, we know the story of Abraham. Is it Isaac? Genesis 26, go and read it. Is it Jacob? Which one of them is uncle, his uncle? His uncle showed him. Do you understand? Where we say, oh, that's my, uh, my family member. Yeah, it's not new. It's in the Bible. His uncle showed him. But God appeared and fought for him. And if you read all of them, they all had a prayer altar. They all had the time spent in God's presence. They all received from God to know where they're going. To know what's next. We look at the life of um, Joseph. We look at the life of David. Even his father rejected him. So what's new? When all his brothers were being trained to be warriors, to be soldiers, to do things for the kingdom, and you know, to be, they were out there shining. He was told, you go to the backside of the desert. That's where you should be. But the king in him came out. He can't be killed. What God has planned and ordained cannot be killed. God has planned, but while he was there, what was he doing? Spending time in God's presence. He was building himself up. He didn't even know he was going to be king. He didn't know who he was going to be. He was content at that time where he was. But because of his diligence, because of his consistency, his consistency because of his faithfulness to what was handed over to him, God promoted him. He was ready for the promotion at the time of promotion. Because if... Um, David had not empowered himself on the backside of the desert. When they said there was a Goliath, what would have given him the boldness to say, who is Goliath? I've killed bears. I've faced lions. So who is Goliath in the despair of all of this? But because he was prepared in the backside of the desert, you know, there was something I said on Wednesday that you prepare, you gain power in the backside of the desert to use it to reign as kings out there. We see a lot of ministers of God. You know that. <laughs> you don't see them when they pray. You don't see them when they are, you know, spending time in God's presence. We just see manifestations. It doesn't, it doesn't come. And they want to be like them. Hmm. Amen. Nothing just comes. Nothing just comes. Well, that is what God is saying. The Right now... Just as we're talking about David, you know, the Holy Spirit is like, for a lot of us, we've been praying and asking God, why are you not answering me? Why is this not happening in my life? The response is in Romans 8, 19 to 21. I'll read the two pity. The Romans 8, Romans 8, 19 to 21. It says the entire universe is standing on tiptoe, yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. The entire universe. Right now there is um, the issue of COVID. And I know pastor has said it and you know, it's the truth. That the answer, not just to COVID, to everything that is happening all around the world is in us believers. But... The person that probably the answer should come through is still sitting back and asking, why me? Why are things happening to me? Why am I not moving forward? God wants you to come. Spend time. Ask. Gen um, Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me, I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Is waiting on us, and the whole world is on tiptoe, waiting for you, for me, to manifest the glory of God. He says, for against its will, the universe itself has had to endure the empty futility resulting from the consequences of human sins. Now, with eager expectation, all creation longs for freedom from its slavery to decay and to experience with us the wonderful freedom coming to God's children. So do you see that it's a bit 
not in line if we, the children of God, are cowering and going back like every other person. Because they're looking to us to enjoy that freedom that we have so they can come. Remember, everything comes back to the Great Commission. Make disciples of men so they can come to you. How come everything is happening all around? And then you seem to just, like, like in Egypt, there was darkness in Egypt, but in Goshen, where the Israelites were, the children of Israel, there was light. There was light. So they are waiting to see that light, the glorious light, the flourishing of his children. The flourishing, and it's not just in the church. We're empowered in the church. That's the backside of the desert. In the church, we hear the word. In the church, we pray amongst ourselves. We build ourselves up in our most holy faith to go forth, to go out there, to reign as kings everywhere God has called us to. It doesn't matter what your profession is, whether you're in ministry or in the marketplace, whatever, as CEOs or as just the line person, whatever, wherever you are. Even the line person will be made the CEO when he's the only one that, has the, that can give them the answer to the question. Everything is going wrong in the company. And you just tell your boss, can I tell you like they, um, Joseph, um, I think the solution to this is this. If you have the solution, then why are you here? Please come back and join us. From the lower person, you join upper, not middle management, upper. You begin to reign with the CEO because the CEO can't make decisions except you. You. Your voice is heard. Before they make the... Where is he? The board is meeting. Is this person going to be there? Then we can't meet until they are available for, to be at the board meeting. Do you understand? That's what God is waiting on us for. And the whole world, the whole world is as well waiting for us to see that manifest. That's why... Um, Paul in Philippians 3 20 he says my passion is to be consumed with him not to cling to my own righteousness based on keeping the written law my only righteousness will be his that's Philippians 3 9 to 10 based on the faithfulness of Jesus Christ the very righteousness that come from God that I may continually long to know the wonders of Jesus and experience the overflowing power of his resurrection working in me. That's why Paul looked at everything. Why am I struggling? He says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. It is in my knowing him and through understanding the power of his resurrection, all that he has done, the new covenant blessings, Knowing what he has settled, the finished work of grace, then I'll be able to live a victorious life. And that is what God is calling us to. It says in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified in Christ. That's NKJV now, not TPT. It is no longer I will live, but Christ lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That is the life God has called us to. And he just wants to bring us back. His children. He says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. He didn't say the people of the world. My people, my children, my children, my people perish for lack of knowledge. That has to stop. This is a wake-up call for us in the church. This is a wake-up call for us believers. It is time for us to rise. It is time for us to take the place that God has given us to reign as kings in life. We are priests who are kings. This is the time to rise up. To let the light of God so shine forth in our lives. And shine forth into the ends of the earth. And I know that even in this season... This is just not, this is part of the beginning of the new covenant blessings. There will be a lot of other ministers that will come. Please take time to hear the word of God. And don't just listen. Hear. Don't just listen. Hear. It's for you. 
purpose it, even if it's a selfish thing. Please don't disturb me. I want to hear the word of God. Everybody keep quiet in this house if you are listening from home. Everybody keep quiet. Separate yourself. Spend time in his presence. Like I said, you will enjoy spending time in the presence of God because it's not a chore. It's like, Lord, what do you have for me today? What are you saying to me today? Because it will begin to download a lot more than we can, we can even think. Answers. You're in your organization, like I said, things are not going on well. Ah, Lord, Kai, I'm here. Things have to turn around. There must be a difference than from those that serve and those that do not. I'm here for a reason and for a purpose. Stop complaining like every other person. Stop talking down on the bosses like every other person. The bosses are doing the best they can to the best of their ability. You have in you the answer. Just like the governments of the world. We're talking about COVID. They're doing the best they can. That's how far they can go. They're man. They're limited. They can't do more than they know. But as believers, we rise up and we know more. There's more on the inside of us. Then let's begin to tap into that more. And even at this time, I just want to, you know, call on. I know there might be some people listening, watching. You don't even know God. You don't know this Jesus Christ. You can't be in a covenant where you don't know. You can't have an inheritance outside of God. So I just want to encourage as many that are listening that do not know Jesus Christ, have not accepted him, don't understand what we're talking about. Jesus Christ talking about accepting him. All you have to do is accept him as your Lord and Savior. And it's very easy. Just say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. From this day, I let go of the old and I take up the new. All that you've done for me, I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to encourage you to connect with us through info at clc.ca. We'd like to know you more to help you through this work so you can begin to reign as kings as well in this world. For every one of us, I just would um, ask us to please rise up and just begin to pray in the spirit based on the word that we've heard this morning. God has spoken. He has released his word for all of us. There's still more. There's more on the inside of us. There's a lot more that God has called us. There's a lot more. Let's begin to tap into that more through the Holy Spirit. Christ in us is the hope of glory. There's Christ in us, the hope of glory. In him we live, in him we move, in him we have been. Everything about us is the Holy, is about Christ. He has given us the Holy Spirit to teach us all things, to bring to our remembrance all things. That we will not remain the same as his children. We will not remain the same as his children. Indeed, begin to tell him, I'm ready for more. I'm ready for more. I let go of the old. I let go of the old. In the mighty name of Jesus, I I lay it down at your feet, Lord. Mm -hmm.